الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه ملء السماوات وملء الأرض وملء ما بينهما وملء ما شئت من شيء بعد أهل الثناء والمجد حق ما قال العبد وكلنا لك عبد والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وعظيمنا ومولانا وقائدنا وقدوتنا وأسوتنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذرياته وأهل بيته ومن تبعهم بإحسان وسلك طريقهم إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد وصينا الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم وإياكم أن اتقوا الله ثم ما بعد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون قال تعالى لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون الله جل في علا says in this verse you will never ever reach and attain بر righteousness and virtue until and unless you spend and sacrifice of what you love furthermore Allah says قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهِ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Say to them, O Messenger of Allah, to the Mushrikeen, Verily, my prayer and my sacrifice and my life and death are for Allah, the Lord of the world. He has no partner or associate. And with this I have been commanded. And I'm the first of those who submit. Allah says, إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرُ فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَالْحَرُ Indeed we have given you al-kawthar, the abundance. أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَثِيرُ We've given you the abundance, so much. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَالْحَرُ Therefore, pray to your Lord and offer the sacrifice. Bear in mind the key word and the key concept for this khutbah is the word sacrifice. One of the scholars and sages of the Salaf, the pious predecessor of this ummah, he summoned one of his students who had just performed Hajj, sat him down and asked him a set of questions regarding the Hajj. Question number one, what thoughts were passing through your mind and what feelings and emotions entered your heart? And what did you experience when you performed your Ihram, when you entered into the state of Ihram and wore your Ihram? So the student answered in the negative. I never really felt anything, or thought anything, or experienced anything. Moving on, question number two. The same question, but for tawaf. What thoughts entered your mind? What feelings entered your heart? And what did you experience? When you were making the tawaf, the student answered in the negative. Nothing. The scholar and shaykh continued with sa'i and the drinking of zamzam and dhabh, the slaughtering, and raju, the pelting. And the student answered all these questions in the negative. I just performed them. The teacher, the shaykh, said to him, return next year and perform the Hajj again. Yes, the obligation of Hajj has been lifted. So 
He doesn't literally have to go back to Mecca and perform again. But the spiritual benefits and the aim and objective, the purpose and the goal of Hajj hasn't been realized, hasn't been achieved at all. It hasn't. It was just a tick box, tick box exercise. Done the ihram, done the, the tawaf, the sa'i, the rajm, drinking of zamzam. We stationed in Arafah, Muzdalifah, and so on. So yes, the obligation of hajj has been lifted. But the, the purpose and the goal behind this ibadah has not been achieved. How does this relate to us? We need to ask ourselves questions regarding salah, regarding wudu, regarding sadaqah, zakah, hajj, umrah, every act of worship. What are we actually thinking and feeling and experiencing? And what should we be thinking and feeling and experiencing? And are the two aligned? And if they are, then Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. But if they're not, we need to address this problem. Now we can talk about so many different acts of worship. But today, there's only one act of worship which I wanted to dwell on for a few minutes. Today is called Yawmun Nah. This Eid or festival is called Eid Al-Adha. The Eid of Sacrifice. Remember I said the key word and the key concept for this khutbah is sacrifice. This, according to this day, according to many, many scholars, is the greatest day, the most virtuous day of the year. The Messenger Sallallahu said, أَعْظَمُ الْأَيَّامِ يَوْمُ النَّحْ The greatest day, the most virtuous day in the sight of Allah is the day of Nah, today, the day of sacrifice. So, the greatest day, why has it been called Yawm Al-Nahr? And this Eid, Eid Al-Adha, the day of sacrifice and the festival or Eid of sacrifice. It's very, very relevant, this topic. Extremely important. And our understanding and perception of sacrifice needs to be correct and comprehensive. It can't be partial. It can't be incomplete. It can't be simplistic and superficial on the surface. So when we think sacrifice, okay, that means grab an animal, slaughter, cut the meat up, give it to the poor, and that's it. Nothing more to it. This is a very restricted and limited and partial understanding of sacrifice. These two names, Yawm al-Nahr and Eid al-Adha, are inextricably connected to the Udhiya, the Qurbani, the sacrificial animal, which is inextricably connected to the story of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. An amazing story, an amazing man, an amazing family. And again, whenever we hear this story, and we all know this story, of Ibrahim alayhi salam standing above his child Ismail waiting to sacrifice. We're very, very familiar with the story. But we shouldn't listen to this story or relate this story or view this story as it's just like an interesting episode or event that happened in the past and nothing more. This story contains many, many lessons and wisdoms and benefits. Wallahi al -Azim. And when a person thinks that subhanallah, this Rasul, Nabi, this Khalil, this great man Ibrahim alayhi salam, wanted a child. Allah quotes his dua in the Quran, Surah al safat my Lord, grant me a righteous child. After decades, after decades, Allah granted him 
Ismail. He grew up with him. As Allah says, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعُ السَّعِي When he grew up with him, he began to walk with him, work with him. And the heart of Ibrahim began to fill with love. The attachment, the affection, the hub he had for that child. The Mufassirin write, أَحَبَّهُ حُبًّا شَدِيدًا He loved him intensely. At that precise moment, Allah says to him, put the knife to his neck. And offer him to me. Wallahi, I don't think words can convey and capture that moment accurately. But Allah puts it beautifully. <laughs> Indeed, this is the clear test and trial and tribulation. Allah Akbar. An amazing man stood there with the willingness, the, the, the determination, and with the submission of his son, that he will enact this. Again, how does this relate to us? Very simple. No one's asking us to sacrifice our loved ones. No one's asking us to put a knife to our nearest and dearest. We're asked to do simple things, very simple things. Let's leave these ultimate sacrifices to the Anbiya and the Rusul. And before I continue, what is sacrifice? Let's listen to the definition and apply it to everything. Sacrifice is to give up something of value and worth in return for something greater in value and worth which is more precious more priceless more invaluable than what you are sacrificing so in relation to the story of ibrahim did he love ismail of course he did he loved him intensely but when the command came sacrificing for my for my sake there was no turning back no turning back. Allah wanted to test his iman, his yaqeen, his tawakkul, his sabr, his submission, his obedience. And he passed the test with flying colors. How does it relate to us? There are so many examples. Allow me to mention things that are relevant and close to home. Let's begin with something. It might seem trivial, but it's not trivial. Let's begin with something like the mobile phone. If I was, this is obviously a khutbah, but if I was to ask, who has a mobile phone here? Everybody bar none would put their hand up. Except for maybe the babies. And we have a very close and intimate relationship and connection and bond with our phones. If somebody took our phones off us, forget for a day, for a few minutes or a few hours, we would contract a fever. Our blood pressure would rise and we would be in a state, in a real state. Imagine someone said to us now, that phone of yours that you are so in love with, can you place it? Somewhere, in a drawer, in a cupboard, away from yourself. Like it's not for a day, that's probably impossible. Just for a few minutes or hours. Pick up the book of Allah and read it. Pick up a Sira book and study it. Help your mom and dad. Help people around you. Try to do as much good as you can without that phone present. And there are many who will fail miserably. No one's saying put a knife to your loved one and sacrifice him for the sake of Allah. Like I said, let's leave that to the Anbiya and the Rusul. We do the basics and we, 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 we fail miserably. And this thing called sacrifice features everywhere in our lives. You had to sacrifice your sleep to get here and pray Salah. 
the doctor. He will tell you, if you don't stop eating this, that, this and that, you will die in a few weeks or a few months. You do it. Why? Because the concept of sacrifice is that you give up something of value and worth in return for something else which is greater in value and worth, which is more priceless and precious than what you are sacrificing. You know, if we thoroughly understand that definition, we'll make sacrifices. Students just finish their exams. With a college, university, school. I mean, if you're not going to sacrifice your time, your sleep, your leisure, your comforts, your desires, your pleasures, your money, even relationships if need be, and connections, to achieve a good grade or whatever it is, then you won't excel. Neither in the dunya or the akhir. As Allah says, خَسِرُ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ ذَلِكَ وَالْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ they will lose the dunya and the akhirah. This is the clear loss. We make sacrifices all the time. A person wants to buy a house, a car, anything. They will sacrifice their sleep. They will sacrifice their relationships with their loved ones. They will sacrifice their comforts and their desires and their pleasures. And they will save for that house or that car. In relationships, as a husband and wife, in order for this relationship to continue, this marriage, the husband has to make sacrifices and the wife must make sacrifices. You can't expect to live the way you were living before and then for this marriage to continue. It won't work. You have to divorce a part of yourself for that to work. You have to make that sacrifice. For that marriage to work, you have to sacrifice. For the sake of Allah, for the sake of the kids, for the sake of the marriage, you have to sacrifice. Parents, parents and children, the parents have been sacrificing all their life. And when the child comes of age, 13, 14, 15, it's like they press the reset button. And that's it. They've forgotten all those sacrifices and they're willing at a whim to throw their parents under the bus and sacrifice for their so-called friends and forget all that sacrifice that their mother, especially the mother, has made for them. So easy. And one can go on and on speaking about the importance of sacrifice. We have to sacrifice. And like I said, no one's saying sacrifice something ginormous the basics we will never excel in the dunya or the akhirah especially the akhirah in relation to the deen we will never excel if we don't make sacrifice we won't we won't excel at all much more can be said on this topic may allah grant us the ability to sacrifice for his sake May Allah grant us the correct and comprehensive understanding of tadhiyah and udhiyah and sacrifice. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur. Alhamdulillahi wahdahu wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya wahdahu ala man la nabiyya ba'dahu wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. إن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه ثم ثن بملائكة المسبحة ثم ثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم تسليما اللهم اجعل اجتماعنا هذا اجتماعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا من بعده تفرق معصوما ولا تبقي فينا ولا منا ولا حولنا أحد شق ولا محروما اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك واغننا بفضلك عن من سواك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين تقبل الله منا ومنكم صالح الأعمال 
وعيدكم مبارك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته